Breaking news, the Department of Health assures Filipinos there is no confirmed cases of coronavirus here in the Philippines. This follows after a five-year-old was admitted in Cebu City for investigation. He manifested pneumonia-like symptoms and a travel history from Wuhan, China. He tested positive for pan-coronavirus and his samples were sent to Melbourne, Australia, where he is, he is tested negative for the 2019 novel or novel coronavirus. Presidential rant about the cancellation of a senator's U.S. visa may have far-reaching consequences, and it's not just any senator, it was Ronald Bato de la Rosa. Last night, President Duterte threatened to terminate the Visiting Forces Agreement that Washington and Manila signed a little over 20 years ago. De La Rosa is a known close associate of Mr. Duterte. He was assigned as a young police lieutenant in Davao City, hometown of the president, who appointed him National Police Chief in 2016. The VFA provides a legal framework for American troops in the country. The agreement was previously unnecessary as the Philippines and the U.S. have a mutual defense treaty signed in 1951. But things changed drastically in 1991 when the Philippine Senate voted to kick out the U.S. military bases in the country. Mr. Duterte's cabinet men sprang into action. Presidential spokesman Salvador Panelo says the process to terminate the agreement has begun as ordered by the president last night. You know, under the Visiting Force Agreement, the expiration will come 130 days from the time the parties notify each other. So, <clears throat> according to Secretary Luxim, he's supposed to be departing any time, a few hours from now, to the U.S. Mm. Mm -hmm. But uh, he said that he has already called the committee to start the process. And he has even informed, I think, I'm not mistaken, <clears throat> the Senate about it. Let's say the Senate knows that they start the process tonight. In a tweet, Foreign Affairs Secretary Teddy Boy Loxin Jr. says, as chair of the VFA, he called Defense Secretary Delphine Lorenzana, the vice chair, to start the process of terminating the agreement. Loxin is also calling on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee because he says, quote, on our side, it is a treaty. On the U.S. side, it is an executive agreement, unquote. Defense Secretary Delphine Lorenzana saying he understands why the president is peeved by the cancellation of Senator De La Rosa's visa because of alleged extrajudicial killings in connection with the drug war. Lorenzana explains... Quote, it is a direct affront to the president being the architect of the drug war, unquote. He recalls the president vowed that he would go to prison for them. And Lorenzana says the president is just being true to his word. Meantime, Justice Secretary Minato Guevara says his department was tasked to study the proper procedure to terminate the VFA and that that is what they are doing now. Reaction to the president's pronouncement has been swift, some urging restraint, others egging the president on. Joyce Ilas has the full story. President Duterte wants to scrap the Visiting Forces Agreement after the U.S. government canceled Senator Bato de la Rosa's U.S. visa. However, Senate National Defense Committee Chair Ping Lakson says the country may lose more if the president drops the deal. In a text message, Lakson cites U.S. technical assistance and support in 2016 when international terrorist Zulkifli Abdir Marwan was neutralized in Mamasapa no Maguindanao. He also recalls during his time as PNP chief, the Americans provided intelligence support in the fight against illegal drugs. Lakson adds the cancellation of the VFA will also have an impact on the West Philippine Sea conflict, terrorism, and military training and aid. But Senator Francis Tolentino believes otherwise. Dahil nandun pa yung, yung MDT, Mutual Defense Treaty, nandun pa yung EDCA, hopefully wala namang epekto. Pag may disaster, makakatulong pa rin natin sila. Senator Bato de la Rosa says while Philippine troops also benefited from the U.S. military, this policy is also, quote, greatly one-sided. Pag magkakumit ng crimes yung uh, mga sundalo nila dito sa atin, wala tayong jurisdiction. Kukunin lang na yung sundalo nila at uh, pwedeng hindi mananagot sa kasalanan na ginawa nila dito sa atin.
For Senator Aimee Marcos, EDCA or the Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement should be terminated, not the VFA. She explains the VFA allows the government to apply local laws on U.S. forces in Philippine territory. Marcos says the EDCA, however, allows U.S. troops and equipment to be stationed in designated Philippine bases for a longer time, skirting the constitutional ban on foreign bases. Joyce Ila, CNN Philippines. This is not the first time the U.S. canceled the visa of a Philippine official. Senator Ping Lakson says his U.S. visa was also canceled several years ago because of the Aragoncillo case. Although he said the U.S. Embassy did not give a reason for the cancellation, he adds he did not make an issue of it as he recognizes the U.S. government's right to grant visas and that it is only his privilege to be given one. Five years ago today, the death of 44 elite policemen shocked the nation. They were sent on a mission to Mamasapano in Maguindanao province to capture known terrorists. But the January 2015 operation failed when Moro rebels ambushed them. AC Nichols looks back. 44 young members of the PNP Special Action Force killed leaving their loved ones and the nation grieving. Salamat sa lahat! Kailangan namin ang hustisya para sa anak namin. Who were responsible for their untimely death? Families blame top-level officials, saying they supposedly knew about this covert operation. In 2017, Ombudsman Conchita Carpio Morales charged former President Noynoy Aquino, former PNP Chief Alan Porisima, and former SAF Director Getulio Napeñas with graft and usurpation of authority. But Aquino and Porisima blamed it on Napeñas. They said the former SAF chief acted alone and disregarded orders to coordinate with other law enforcement agents. Naloko ko eh. No? Hindi namin natunugan na hindi sumusuway doon sa usapan at sa utos. Lawful order sinusuway hanggang too late na. But the charges didn't hold up. Last year, Ombudsman Samuel Martres withdrew the cases against Aquino for lack of basis. And months after, the anti-graft court also dropped the cases against Purisima and Napeñas for the same reason. It isn't over yet. Some of the victims' families have asked the Ombudsman to reinvestigate the incident. What they're after? Homicide charges against Aquino, Purisima, and Napeñas. 44 people died and uh, their deaths uh, were due to the negligence of uh, the former president in the planning, in the execution. Will they face trial for homicide? Once again, the ombudsman will decide. Taal Volcano is gaining steam almost two weeks after it erupted, displacing thousands of residents in Batangas. State volcanologists observing higher amount of sulfur dioxide emission in the main crater of Taal Volcano in Batangas. In their latest bulletin, FIVOC says the sulfur emission this morning almost doubled to 409 metric tons compared with yesterday's 224 metric tons. Over 400 low-intensity earthquakes were recorded, signifying continuous magma movement that may lead to an eruption. FIVOX reiterates a possible eruption within hours to days is still possible and areas declared as high risk for volcanic-based surge should be evacuated. The Al volcano in Batanga spewing steam, indicating ongoing life-threatening activity. Government volcanologists recording over 400 low-intensity earthquakes. They say the seismic activity signifies continuous magma movement that may lead to an eruption. FIVOX reiterates its alert against a possible eruption within hours to days. This warning has been maintained since January 12th when the volcano spewed ash that severely affected Batangas and Cavite. The ashfall reached Metro Manila. Authorities find more ways to make sure people are, are out of high-risk areas in case of a full-scale Taal eruption. Our David Santos joins us live from Cuenca. Batangas. David, aside from land access, are security forces also taking control of Taal Lake? But tonight, while the police and military strictly impose restrictions within the immediate towns around Taal uh, vol Volcano, the Philippine Coast Guard also flexing its force to make sure people stay out of Taal Lake. 
remains to be the scene at the Taal Lake. A number of fishermen still venturing into the lake and mindful of Taal Volcano's looming threat. Since calls to stay out of the hazard zones, most especially on the lake, seem to fall on deaf ears, the Coast Guard is setting its foot down. Nagagat kami ng mga bangka para hindi na sila maattempt magpunta ng laut para din po sa safety nila. Down, down is it? In two days, this Coast Guard unit has moved to shore more than 70 motor bangkas. Coast Guard personnel are deployed in almost all of the lakeshore towns, particularly in San Nicolas, Talisay, and Agoncillo. With water transport now immobilized, they also hope to stop people from crossing to the volcano island, like this man, in a now viral video, who climbed the Taal crater just days after its eruption. Bali, pinakusapan namin sila ng maayos, hindi naman sa pupersahin natin agad sila. Pinaliwanagan natin sila ng maayos na... Kung maaari, iangat na natin lahat yung bangka. Since most of the lecture communities are still on a lockdown, Mataas na Kahoy is just among the few remaining fishing villages that had allowed fishermen to collect their catch. Well, not until the Coast Guard arrived today. Ano po ang sabi ng Coast Guard po sa inyo? Eh, hey, nga, pinagbabawala na o pangisda. Eh, paano naman kung hanap buhay namin dito, wala mo kami pinagkukunang iba. Ayo, inaamba. Eh, medyo masama ang loob. About a ton of fresh tilapia was harvested on Friday, the last time fishermen were allowed into the lake. Despite the lockdown and the possibility that supply will soon be limited, tilapias are sold in markdown prices. The selling price is down to about half of 110 pesos per kilo, the price before the Taal volcano eruption. Fish traders, many of them also displaced by the calamity, appealing for consideration. May relief goods nga pong mga binibigay, pero paano po nun ang, ang perang pang-araw-araw na mga naghihingan ng mga bata, pang gatos na mga bata? Hindi mang pwedeng umasa na umasa sa gobyerno tayo dahil mahipit din ang pangyayalangan nila. Hindi naman na isang tao, dalawang tao. Napakaraming tao na epektuhan. With the Taal volcano still showing signs of activity, Batangueños are resorting to all means, hoping it would subside soon. From seeking divine intervention, they believe that making an offering to the restive volcano would either help calm it down or lessen its destructive impact if it erupts again. Ngawa na po na Diyos, minimal naman ang ashfall dito. Kaya lang, yun nga, we need to evacuate the people kasi hindi natin alam yung activity ng volcano. Baka magbagong direksyon ang hangin. Fishermen and fish traders have been slipping through Mataas na Kahoy Town. So officials have ordered stricter implementation of the total lockdown. The Coast Guard will maintain its coastal security patrol to keep an eye on fishermen or any resident insisting trying to get access to the Taal Lake. Pia. David, with the Coast Guard moving the bangkas to shore, uh, just to clarify, they're not confiscating the boats, right? They're just not allowing them on the lake, correct? That's right, uh, Pia. Coast Guard personnel moving fishing boats to the shore for two days now is rather seen as a symbolic gesture uh, to reiterate to fishermen that they need to stay away from the Taal Lake. It is unlikely for the Coast Guard to seize uh, these uh, motor bankas, Pia, because for practical reasons. One, there are hundreds of fishing boats operating in the Taal Lake. Uh, these boats are not only difficult to move around, the Coast Guard also has no place to keep them. Now, second, the Coast Guard is counting on the cooperation of fishermen and fish traders Time and, time, and time, time and again, uh, like what authorities have been constantly repeating, the Coast Guard wants the Taal Lake uh, fish folk to understand that these measures put into place are for their own safety, Pia. David Santos reporting live from the town of Mataas, Nakahoy in Batangas.